Okay, I'm out in the desert here and I wanted to talk to you there's my pack over there about uh, survival in the desert more or being comfortable at least um, so how do you do that? Well, there's a lot of things you have to look for. I found a place right here in this area here I thought I'd put a tarp up it's shielded from the wind that blows from that way you got a bunch of trees here, this big tree here, and it's flat and free of debris and whatnot. Um, so I thought I'd try this place. So I'll set up a tarp and kind of talk to you about how to do things in the desert versus in the mountains where there's conifers. Well, my cell, I mean my uh, good camera went out and so I had to start this whole thing over again uh, so I'm using my not so good camera and hopefully it has enough batteries but I had to go back to the truck which is about oh well, it took me a mile and it only should have took a half a mile but uh, went and got this camera now I'm back to the place where I set up this tarp and so I got to start the whole thing over again the reason coming out here is how do you survive in the desert in the cold? It's about 20 degrees, about an inch of snow on the ground, kind of nasty, overcast, no wind though, that's really nice. So let me show you what I did so far. First of all, since everything looks the same out in the desert, I uh, followed my tracks as best as I could, but also you can see that green little mat there on the tree limb, and that's a real good marker for where I put my tarp set up at. So good idea to mark your, your way back to something. But here's my tarp set up. Kind of like it. It has a guideline that goes up to this tree. And it's kind of a diamond shaped shelter that uh, is just mostly just to get under the weather. Not to stay overnight, but you could. I'd have to uh, tie it down a little bit better. But you can see it, uh, it covers really well. I have a, a line going up to the tree right there. Then I got a couple of garbage bags. Always know that they're good to have around. Putting dry branches on. One extra one over there. And my bag is uh, on the tree here. So my next uh, order of business is to get a, a little fire going right here. So we'll get that going. Okay, I'm getting some really small stuff. It's a red size. That are my initial fire starting ones beyond the tinder bundle. I'm getting only the real driest ones that break off are really tiny. So, getting these gathered up for my wood uh, initial fire. Okay. I'm going to try a flint and steel fire since I have the time and it's not like a super emergency. Got this nice kit that a friend in California gave me. I don't have a very big piece of flint, but it should work. I got a neat uh, little hatchet uh, blade that I sharpened from Wolf Creek Forge. It's razor sharp. And I'll see if we can get a fire going this time. Don't have much striking surface here. Hopefully my char is good. Doesn't seem to be. There we go.
having to work at this one. Possibly the twigs aren't as dry as I thought they were. It's been snowing out here, of course. I think I got her now. I guess you can see that. So I'll just keep adding uh, twigs on here, small stuff, for a while. Now I want to talk to you about desert survival versus mountain survival in the conifers. A little different out here. I'll get the fire going and get back to you. Desert are a little bit harder because the juniper is a little bit harder to split uh, down into nice pieces. It, you can do it though. Uh, it's another way. But I like the uh, twig fires, twig bundles like this to use instead. Excuse me, I'm going to get some more branches here. I'm just doing this for a little warming fire and I don't want it to get too big anyway. Anyway, desert survival. Um, you gotta, it's more open. There's not as many trees in a lot of places so you gotta find a, a place where you got a good background from the wind and back behind me here is a bunch of trees and the wind blows from that way and you also have the mouth of the tent the open side on this side so the wind coming this way um, is not going to affect me and uh, this is a diamond tent shelter kind of a type thing a 10 by 10 um, and I also wanted to say thanks to Evans he gave this old kit to me and uh, it of course proved well there. Anyway, desert survival, you got to worry about wind and, uh, and the elements more at times anyway because it's more exposed. So you want to get an unexposed place like I did here. Try to get a good bunch of dry wood. You can cut the bigger stuff uh, and uh, get it going later. I made a fire lay on the snow here so it would be dry for the fire to get started. But anyway, you got to worry about other things out in the desert. Um, Animal-wise, cougars. There's a lot of them around this uh, area. And so you got to be aware of that. The worst thing, though, the worst thing is pack rats. Pack rats are really miserable around here. And it's really hard to get away from them, meaning that uh, they do what their name says. You don't want to leave any food out overnight, just kind of like if you're in bear country. You don't want, and you, you can't put it up in the trees because they climb. And so, I guess you could put it out on a, on a limb, but they're really good climbers. So, pack rats are really a bad thing to, to have around here. And so you got to worry about them more. And like, don't leave your sleeping bags unattended because they love the, the stuffing to make their nest better. Uh, they'll chew right through a lot of stuff. And they're just nasty. And they're not real healthy, of course. They build nests uh, in the trees. And I'm not sure if they burrow in the ground, too, but I know they have nests in the trees. So you got to watch out for them. Um, it's better to have a tent than a tarp because they can come into the tarp and tent a lot of times anyway and they can just chew right through it but a tent's a little bit more of a barrier but if you have uh, stuff in the tent food wise they'll go after it so you got to watch out for pack rats is one of the worst things and the weather it can be pretty dawning out in a uh, area where the winds blowing so you want to get a good tied down shelter I got this one tied down pretty good. I could do better. Um, anyway, the the elements are, are a little bit harsher. You don't have the fat wood out here. You do have bark from the juniper and the sage. I can start a bow drill out here with the sage real easily. The juniper is a little bit harder, but the juniper has good uh, 
bark for tinder bundles so it's really nice um, I take a minimalist pack when I'm away from the truck I'm about a half mile or a mile not very far I just wanted to do this video and kind of show where you go and I'm gonna walk you around here in a little bit anyway and I'm sorry the video is not as good a quality as the one I was going to do I'll take some pictures with my cell phone to make it better but this is kind of an ideal little place right here is protected there's a whole bunch of roads out here in the desert but uh, it's away from the roads enough that uh, you're sheltered you got uh, these nice big trees behind you to shelter you so shelter is really important as far as wind and uh, and the elements coming in the pack rats cougars aren't going to be much of a problem normally but uh, you do have to be aware that there are cougars around um, and then uh, having a good uh, place for your for your uh, tarp I got uh, one of these here for a day type thing I just roll it up but if I was going to stay overnight I would have uh, a good uh, insulation bed sleeping bag of course and things like that and a wool blanket but uh, the snow makes it extra hard in the desert because you don't have all those juniper boughs I mean those uh, fir boughs and stuff like that you do have the juniper boughs you could use them but they're not that great you don't have very very tall grass around here and what there is it might be wet so it's best to have your stuff with you like this if you're out in the desert um, the desert does provide a lot of dry wood you can usually find dry wood let's get a little bit hot here dry wood most everywhere because there's a lot of dead stuff you can find garbage out in the desert too um, stuff that you can use to boil water maybe um, I found an old bed, bed uh, springs back there it might be good to sleep on if it was uh, not infested with anything um, I found a pallet back there you could burn that up or use it for something to set on um, you find bottles out here you can nap uh, an arrowhead point or a knife cutting edge a lot of people just are really damaging the area and they throw bottles out beer bottles etc you can get the bottom of a beer bottle and make a nice cutting edge with it of course I always uh, try to come prepared in the first place so I don't have to worry about that all I have to worry about is wood for the fire mostly and uh, a good sleeping area so let me take you around a little bit here while the fire is going a little bit this is what my tarp looks like I got it suspended up there and then I got it suspended in the tree up above it here so you get more fullness back here and then I folded the ends in and on the uh, sides here so you got this part inside where you can uh, put your gear back there in the back and it's nice and dry and you don't have to worry about the snow so let's look around the area I got some garbage bags a couple of them I put my uh, different things on them to keep them dry of course you can put it over your bag uh, like here I'd put this in the tent if I was going to sleep but uh, hanging on a tree otherwise um, let me see so good places to get uh, wood is off of any of these trees here where you got dead limbs around and like I say pretty much anywhere you look there's some dead limbs around here's a juniper that's dying and this is where I get the bigger stuff right there which I really don't want to but uh, you can see the area around uh, here and then back to my place I like my place because it's nice and flat kind of sheltered you know like I said so you gotta pick out an area like that there's a road that's over there no one's been traveling on it and there's one quite a ways over in that distance too so uh, anyway nice area you got some rock outcroppings right back here that kind of shelter from the wind um, another place to camp might be right over there see if I can point the right way uh, in that area right there 
where you had that bank come up and then you got the flat place because that would shelter from the wind as well. Um, out here it's nice and flat but you don't have the backdrop of trees like you should have so uh, you do have to pick a good place and uh, anyway a lot of dead limbs on these juniper right here and then if you were going to start a fire um, these sage right down here are great for doing bow drill fires and if you get the dead sage then you have some good uh, bark and of course you got the juniper here with its dead uh, bark that's really good to uh, make tinder bundles with and I didn't get around to it the fuzzy stuff right here this stuff here is great uh, to make bundles with and I'll gather some of this up and then a lot of times take it home make a bundle and then put it in my kit uh, some of the things that I have with me uh, I got a a big blanket here I mean a towel and then in my kit I got it organized pretty well for me anyway I got my uh, uh, water container here and some coffee and food I got my poncho there and then I got my uh, stove right here and then inside um, it's just a jumble of things I got my Bill Siegel knife I got some extra tinder in this uh, can here. I got some cooking supplies right here. Uh, spices in a little Altoids tin. Always carry at least one freeze dried uh, meal with me. I got a cup right there and some sugar. And even got uh, my bow drill set that I make uh, with all the stuff in it as well. And Anyway, I got all kinds of fire making ability down there uh, and whatnot, but this is just uh, my bag out of the truck. It's not like uh, one that I'd take normally if I was going to go and stay overnight right here. It's more of one where I would uh, go for emergency. Anyway, uh, you can see I've got plenty of room back here to uh, sleep and stay warm and everything if I had to in a survival situation. And I do carry this tarp in that bag as well. So, I always carry a bunch of paracord with me, tying up. Uh, it's hard to make cordage out here because of the type of plants there are. If you're close to water, you might be able to get some cattail or something, but uh, anyway, I'm rambling on. but. Out in the desert, you got to pay attention to more things than uh, you might in the conifer area where I'm really used to doing. Well, I thought I'd show you this. This is where an animal has been and resting underneath this juniper. And of course, if you look, it's a deer. And there's the tracks. And he took off toward my camp area right there. There are a lot of deer around here and that's another thing that you might think about if you're out in the desert is to have some way to procure a uh, deer if you're in a survival situation. Like I always carry a firearm with me and if I really had to and there was a deer nearby I could do that um, or a rabbit or something of that sort. So anyway here's a deer bed right here and uh, by the way, that little hint, you shouldn't uh, put your, uh, your bedding up when it's tick time or even, even not that time. Um, deer have a lot of ticks on them and it's not a real good idea to put uh, your tarp down or your tent on a uh, deer bed area. This looks like it'd be a good area, a real good area for um, to put in your tarp in. It's nice and uh, sheltered here. It is a deer path right through here but uh, you could claim it for your own. You got these two junipers to buffet the wind that's coming that direction. So this would be an ideal place too um, for a, uh, a tarp shelter tent. You got the lower lands right down there. Um, 
so it's colder usually down there and you got a lot of trees to buffet the wind right up here so this would be a good area right here I just noticed this well, I've been out looking for any deer and also uh, a uh, rat's nest I can show you but look at the the span this deer must have been really running the last track is right here and I'll put my foot there and it's one two three before another step so he was hightailing from here and it's been really recently because the snow is all disturbed right here and so he might be headed that way and so I'm going to head out that way a little bit before my fire goes out okay this is a piece of juniper I saw and I don't know if you can see it but some of these pieces are pretty decent for uh, doing split wood fires a lot of knots in them but uh, still not bad anyway that's why I don't usually do a split wood fire just because they have so many knots and they're hard to get down into fine material but you could split them anyway to make them more burnable so juniper now just a little bit more on my kit I have uh, a uh, bigger knife in the pack that uh, I always have with me a Bill Siegel knife and I haven't used this one yet. It's like a bear grill or light my fire uh, mora type of uh, knife. Twist this and your fire steel comes out. So one thing I've got to try still, get it back in there. But moras are always nice knives. And my silky saw, I always keep that in my day pack. Got a little bit wet there. And it has two um, angles so if you're cutting down low you can put it in that angle and uh, put it in that angle for the normal cutting and then I carry my cold steel tomahawk uh, mainly because it's light I got it really sharpened well and it has a nice pounding uh, stake so I can pound things in with and uh, a uh, Gentleman, I can't remember who now, but made this sheath for me on the Bushcraft USA forum. And it's just a beautiful sheath. And it wraps around the handle and snaps. And that's always on my pack on the side. So, good to have a, a good saw, some kind of an axe if you can, and a good cutting tool. So I always have that with me, as well as all the fire making stuff. And I got a good fire going here at the juniper, the split wood that I used, and a little bit of other stuff on top, but juniper is a good burning fire wood. It uh, is really used quite a bit around this area because it's a good burning wood. Uh, it's a dirty wood though when you use the chainsaw to cut it up. It has a lot of uh, sandy stuff in it, dust and whatnot, because you're out in the desert. But uh, when you're out here camping, it's the ideal wood. And uh, so I cut up a few pieces there. And I get them from these trees right behind me. I don't have to walk very far. And you get some nice big limbs right here that are nice up, uh, sheltered and in the dry. So I can cut that one up and that one. And this long one sticking out here. It has a little bit of snow on it, but it'll burn up right away. So anyway, you're not lacking fuel out in the desert, uh, dry fuel maybe, but uh, you can get it. You just got to look for it. And the bark, especially from the sage and juniper, is good tinder making. Wanted to show you something that's kind of important too, how well my uh, shelter is, uh, is camouflaged. So if you look all around, you're not going to see it. And so 
even if there's my fire going, you're not going to see it very much. But walk with me here. I'm kind of in a little hollow, but not down too far. And there it is. And that's why I say it's sheltered really nicely. And uh, you can see I got the fire going. Not very good. But uh, anyway, nice area. And I'll come back here. Maybe I'll camp overnight sometime here. But uh, it's nice and sheltered from people view as well as uh, from animals, etc. See a lot of deer activity on this flat here headed back and forth and I haven't seen any deer but recently there was one in front of me so it'd be fun to see one okay you see I got rid of everything and put it back to normal now I'm headed out and I'm headed that way and I have to go around a few things but it's always a good idea to try to keep your bearings where you're going because you can't always depend on the snow even because it could be snowing later and fill up the track so you got to know direction wise at all times have a compass with you a map if you're in an unknown area I'm not very far from the road so I don't have to worry that much I can just head north and I'll be there and you look around here and this is a road here but of course it hasn't been used lately anyway I'll follow it because it's easier walking and I think I know where there's a rat's nest up here I'll show you as well I've been walking a ways now and you know where I was is really perfect because there wasn't any rat nests around either and you'd like to put your camp away from them here's one and you can see where they've built up uh, quite a bunch of uh, juniper needles somebody sawed off that limb there but right there in the crevice is a nest and I'm a good distance from where I uh, put up my tarp so we're still headed that way you can see my tracks in the ground so pretty easy well the roads right out there and I came from over here and it shows how I know where north is but it also shows how my pickup is hidden up here because I came around from that direction over there and back around and I knew it was in here somewhere but pretty well hidden and I was looking for tire tracks because there wasn't anybody out here and it does show maybe you should make uh, markers to where you're going so you won't get confused you know this could be a survival situation if it was getting dark it's about three o'clock in the afternoon but if it was getting dark and you couldn't find your truck that's a whole new story anyway thanks for coming along